So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here where I had put this stuff on the sides and um, just because I, I did that kind of with what I had left over from doing the, the bottom. But this, especially as we go forward here, like once I get up into here, I'm, not, I'm just going to put a skim coat on this because this is all pretty fair and pretty rounded. It doesn't have, once again, the reason that I did the top, the, the bottom of the hull like this is because I had a pretty proud lip right here where that fiberglass now i probably could have just skimmed it and done all that but i chose to do it this way and i'm gonna see what happens and if it was wrong it was just more work for me and you know a little more cost to me so i bear all of it so i'm not saying this is for everybody but this is why i did what i did and we'll see how it plays out but so this morning i got a couple of hours i'm gonna go ahead and basically sand all of this back and uh, on this side and then once i get done with that I'm going to start pulling putty and I'm going to go ahead and try and putty the whole bottom so that I'll be ready to get it. If I can get putty on the bottom and if I can get a skim coat on all of this, I'm going to go ahead and do that and uh, get ready where maybe tomorrow or the next day I can come back in here and sand all this back. It's, uh, it's coming along. I think it's going to look really good. It's cool out this morning, which is good. So I'll be able to get in here and uh try and work on it and uh get this thing get ready to paint hopefully get it done before too long so that's what we're gonna do today okay so as you see right there uh, i'm gonna show about a minute and 42 seconds of actual sanding so this gives you an idea of how much time it really takes and honestly I was a little surprised that, that you know, and I'm, you can see I'm kind of taking my time here, although I'm, I'm working. But it really only go about a minute, 42 seconds, two minutes at a time. And I think my biggest thing is, you know, not in the best shape, but that breathing through that respirator is a lot like, you know, being in the mountains. Um, so you can see I'm, I'm sanding down those ridges, and already you should be able to hear, if I'll be quiet, should be able to hear the difference in the tone. Um, you can see those wide parts right there at the top, you know, kind of in the center right. They, they look like they're really tall, but those are almost all very flat to the to the surface of the fiberglass. So I was just kind of show this. You can see it's windy. This, you know, the dust is coming off of here. Uh, this stuff does sand pretty easy, which is why I'm continuing to use it, and, and I know it. So I'm. You know, the, the evil you know is sometimes better than the evil that, that you don't know. So I'm, I'm doing this. It's a little more expensive. It's easy to mix and stuff, and it lays out nice. But just wanted to show this, and then uh, immediately following this, I'm going to give you a comparison because I do a lot of this in time lapse. Sometimes it's hard to keep track of time and, and actually how much time is passing. You know, not that some of you may not care, but just, just for those that do, you know, those that are looking to do this, you just have to take your time and pace yourself, and it, you know, it, it, it's work, but it's very fulfilling. So now let's take a look at how it, what it looks like, the same process, the same exact from a different camera angle. So that same process there as you saw, you know, there's a minute 42, it was actually a little bit less than eight seconds, but it's just interesting to show that. It's, it's easier for me to do because I can just set up the cameras and, and just kind of let them, let them go and, and I can sync them and kind of change views when, it, when I need to. But as you can see here, I'm just, I'm working this, this area over. This was some extra putty that I had when I had, when I did the bottom and the transom with the notch trowel. And at that point in time, you know, I just went ahead and spread it out um, to stay consistent, um, and it's. And I wanted to see also how it worked on this small section on the side. Uh, it does sand out pretty well, but you know I have learned through the process from from the time that I started working with this fairing compound that really a skim coat on these sides is all I need. I think that's what you'll see me do going forward. But uh, I'm just going to work on this. And uh, I'll, I'll show it. I've sped it up. This is about four times. You know, we're going about at four speed fast forward here a little bit just to kind of reduce the time. All in all, on this one little piece of section here, um, I do take breaks. I just cut those out in, in an effort to try and shorten the video. But I just want to show this because, you know, um, this is just part of the process. And, you know, maybe you can fast forward through it if you like. But this is, uh, 
some stuff like when I was looking to build that, that would have been interesting to me. So all in all, I think it took me about 30 minutes and um, to go over this little area here. Um, and once again, I don't, not that it probably took 30 minutes, but as you can see right here, when I go one-handed, it's kind of like I'm just kind of touching up a few things and, and I'm learning when is when is done done you know when when do i need to stop when is when is it enough when have i done enough and you know um so part of that's what you see me doing here and then i you know i think i'm done and then i come back uh, hopefully you can really hear the difference in the sound like from from before like i talked about you can hear the difference in the sound of the paper going over the the uh the fairing compound but you know up here in these areas it's pretty thin but i'm just trying to rough it up uh, not rough it up, but just kind of get it back to coating. And you can see a lot of that stays in there and stays on the surface, um, like those parts up there close to that where that chine is. I mean, it looks like it's a thick coat, but that is, I mean, it is just, it's very, very thin, very, very thin. So when I come back on top of this, which we'll get into today, you'll see how it lays out a little bit different. And as I watch this, I wish I could sand this fast all the time. It, you know, I'd have this thing done in about a week. But uh, it's, it's like I said, it's, it's a lot of work, but it's very fulfilling. You know, see, I go back and I'm still touching up those chines and stuff. I'm trying to make sure that I'm, I've got that those chines flat. Uh, just how the board's laying in there. That's what you see me doing here. All right. So this is something I learned. Changing out the sandpaper on the sanding block. When you pull this off, see you get a little dust and stuff up underneath there. So you saw, maybe saw in the last video, I'll show a clip here where I put a new piece on. And in trying to get all that dust off, I use some denatured alcohol. Very windy today. and wipe all this off. So what I was thinking is, as I was doing this, I'm getting any of that residual glue off that was holding any any dust or anything like that. All right, so as I wipe the surface here, I kind of thought I'd let that dry, and then pulled me out a new piece, stuck it on there thinking, okay, it's clean. But what happened was the alcohol, I think, broke down the adhesion. So what I figured out is, if you just take and light that, and you can't really see it, but it'll flame up, get rid of all that alcohol that was on there. Now I can just lay me a new piece out. You know, about like that. And I generally cut mine just a little bit long, because I can always cut it a little shorter. I can't cut it longer. So this is just a roll of Dura Gold. Um, I think it's made by the same people that make this block. So adhesion is it's got pretty good glue on the back of it. I haven't had any problems since I've started doing it this way. So we'll see. And I'll just kind of get it started. Get her lined up there just a little bit over the edge. Pull it back. Just kind of make sure you get it straight on there. I'm sure there's somebody that does this better or I'm doing something wrong. But you know, as with this notch trial, as I'm learning, you know, nobody likes the way I did it. I think it's gonna work out pretty good for me. And so I'll put that on here. Then I just come back. put it in your pocket keep it as a memento but that's it that's the way I've been able to use this sanding board and changing the stuff out of here and the glue sticks pretty good so here it is after I've kind of finished all my sanding on that side and all and generating the dust I'll come back and I'm, I've wiped the whole hole down um, with acetone here actually with acetone and uh, I'm gonna get ready. I'm gonna start putting some of this stuff together, and this is a total fair. And, and I, I'm gonna leave every batch that I make in here. I'll speed it up like this one, 
but it does mix up pretty good. And then here it is, uh, I've kind of skipped forward a little bit because I didn't have really good camera angle, but I just use that little uh, six inch blade there and I just kind of kind of get it up on there and I kind of just, you know, it's more like I'm using the side of the boat or whatever area I'm using. I'm just trying to get the stuff off of that smaller board on there. And then I come back and I pick up that tri that uh, that big knife there and it kind of helps me to spread it. And I'll, I'll talk through that here in a little while, but you just kind of see how I'm doing it right here and keep in mind I'm still kind of getting you even right here I'm still kind of getting used to this is kind of the first time I've used this big long knife so I'm getting used to it but you know by the end of the day by the time I was done here kind of felt like I had a really good program and I'm, I'm putting this stuff on here just as thin as I possibly can so we'll talk about that right now on the sides here I'm doing a little bit different obviously not doing a notch trial on this on the sides because this 1208 the weave on it is just so much tighter um, there's not as much to feel so this is kind of more traditional um, I'm, I'm still not entirely opposed to what I did up top there um, we're gonna see in the next coat based on a little bit that I saw on the, the side and the back back here I think I'm gonna be really happy with this um, you know and I, I think it's gonna save me in the end uh, a little more work on the front end, certainly, I'm not, not going to debate that anymore. That's what I chose to do. We're going to live it out. But So here I'm just taking, I got this little six inch taping knife. This is like a sheetrock knife from Harbor Freight. And I'm just kind of putting it on there and then I have a 12 inch uh, knife. Same thing as sheetrock blade. I don't have a big trowel or anything special. It's like a little $10 uh, 12 inch knife sheetrock knife and then I'm just trying to smooth it out and you can see I'm trying to leave a little thin layer in there I'm kind of shooting for like a 16th Because um, I feel like that'll That should kind of sand back pretty good You know just looking down the side of the boat. It looks pretty good So I'm, I'm gonna try and just get this side here finished and then I'm gonna have to stop for the day and um, That's one of the issues that I'm fighting is that you know like this stuff it would be better if I could come back and hot coat you know fill some low spots and then come back and hot coat some some high spots but the way that it was working out I'm gonna have to put it on there sand it so it's it's not gonna be as efficient as it could be but once again that's just my situation so I'm gonna finish up this side here and then I'm gonna shut down I'm gonna actually go go uh, to a baseball game this afternoon so I'm late already, so I'm going to hurry up and get this put on right here. Hopefully, I think I got more than enough. I may actually walk around on the other side a little bit. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, may, may go hit the transom if I've got, depending on how much I have left. So, that's what I'm about to do. Yeah, I'm just kind of getting it on here with this smaller trowel. Just kind of, just kind of getting it on there, and uh, once again, kind of start at the top. Let gravity be your friend there. Try and get it up on that corner. I got to go back and get some of that. Yeah, I had to speed this up a little bit. I mean, obviously, I'm 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 not super comfortable with laying this stuff out yet. I, I feel like I get a lot better as I go. Um, you know, I've never done any drywall work or anything like that, so this is somewhat foreign uh, to me. I mean, I've done a lot of construction work, but that's so I'm gonna speed it up just you know to make this go a little faster. So here it is. It's actually a, it's a 14 inch deal. So when I start off, I'll kind of leave it at an angle just to kind of smooth the stuff in there. Bit of flex off of my little brushes. Um, I kind of leave, and then I kind of stand it up, and uh, really, really, that really gets me how thin or how thick I want it. So, once again, I just lay it in here, and then I wind up with a loading on it, and I can go back and place that behind me wherever I want. I need some up in this area here. there you can just barely see through there which is thinking about where I want to be back up so as I speed up here watch you're gonna see it like leaves a little gouge right there it's just like a little piece of chip or something 
Um, I don't know where it come from, but once you get that in there, it leaves like a little gouge in your fairing compound. So you got to make sure you get that piece out. When you know immediately when I see it, I try and pull those, find those little pieces, and get them out of there, and then uh, come back. You know, right there on that bow, it's hard to see because that's where that glass overlapped. Uh, you know, I probably uh, did the best job, I think, of what I did right there, where I, I put some where that transition was, and then I come back and skimmed it out, and it all worked out pretty good. So, you can see, I got this whole side here done last time. Uh, I'm gonna start off. I'm gonna go ahead and put a skim coat on that on this top I've, I've done all I'm gonna do on that you can just kind of see here on the corner I'm trying to get this corner up so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this so that this side will be set and getting because uh, and let it letting it set up because uh, I'm, I'm gonna have time to, today to work on it I'm gonna go ahead and pull putty on all of this transom I think now today with the light you can see it a little better see where those high lines are like right in here you know all down through here like this whole grid here so hopefully this next round of a putty compound that'll get better and then we're gonna start on the side and go ahead and skim coat it now we're not gonna pull a trowel on it because this is at 1208 it's a much smoother surface doesn't have near the weave in it that that, that had and it shouldn't have the lumps and bumps so we're gonna get a, do it do that on that side so we're gonna be pulling this as well so we spend most of the morning today uh, just pulling putty basically we're gonna put a coat on uh both all of the bottom that side and this side and then this side so it's going to be a a fair amount of time just pulling uh putting new fairing compound on so here we go i'm about to start um filling the doing that bottom side right there on which will be the starboard bottom and uh like i said i i leave all my mixing of this compound in there you know once again i use this this smaller knife just to, uh, you know i'm not really trying to to do much here other than just kind of get it on the surface and kind of just dab it on there and once again i learn as i go how you know how thin or how much i need and then i just come back with that with that longer knife there which gives me a better compound i'm, I'm real concerned as i go through here i'm starting to kind of you see me focus on those chines because i want to make sure that those chine lines are, are really really sharp uh where it, where it comes to the edge now on the front here i'll probably round that over a little bit and the paint's going to do some of that as well um but i want i want at least to have those as sharp as possible and then i can come back and sand it like from probably where i'm at towards the back the rear two-thirds of the boat i'm going to try and keep those as sharp as possible but i'm just showing this um you know hopefully it's uh it's starting to make some sense a lot of people have talked about how how thick and, I, and they're worried about how thick the fairing compound is going to wind up being but i'm going to show you here once we get to the back it, i think maybe it'll be a little clearer and here it is like i said i'm trying to continue focusing on those things and i tried using two little scrapers there kind of at a point to make sure they were flush and and I just realized I'm going to use one and, and try and let, make that putty a little bit proud on that corner. And then I'll come back and I'll sand it back where I want it. So as you see me pulling that putty from the from the keel, from you know the center of the keel out towards the chines, yeah, um, it's probably good to understand her now when I'm going back the other way. But ultimately, I pull it down. You can see right there when I'm when I'm pulling that stuff down. All I'm doing basically is filling any voids but that were left in the low areas because the the tops of those notches are basically flat all the way down. It's almost like it's 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 providing me a uh, a ridge to ride along but it's really really smooth and like I said I think in the end I'm gonna be very happy with the way the bottom comes out um, with how I've done it and, and what what it's gonna produce in the end so I'm uh, see me constantly working with that little spreader there trying to get that in now I think you can really see from that angle that shine the way it, you know the side of the boat everything you know the curves and all look really you know look pretty nice 
uh, looks nice and flat and, and smooth and fluid uh, and fair, uh, if that's the word. And I think after I get done sanding this round, yeah, I really like that angle. And there's some angles that show you the, the rake of the bow uh, or the, the arch of the bow and how it's, you know, it looks really smooth with no notches. Um, but I think this, this uh, angle here with that camera there, you can see um, when we go back to it, you're going to see once I start pulling with that wider knife, um, you're going to see how I'm kind of riding along those edges of that stuff and it, it comes out pretty good, which, you know, this is probably where everybody wanted me to start and I should have just done this from the start. I, I get it. I understand. Um, you know, um, I, I, I tried to play it safe um, even though, you know, it's not, not traditional. So. Now I'm going to put some mud here on the, uh, I call it mud, I don't know, uh, some putty, some fairing compound on the pad of the boat. And, uh, you know, all of that's really, I was really worried that that would, because of the size and all, it, was gonna, it wasn't going to come out looking as uniform and straight and all. But after I've kind of, I've played with it and tweaked it a little bit since then, uh, it's coming out nice. But uh, also let me comment, you know, and even though I live in South Louisiana, this is, you know, the middle of February in the middle of which is generally the coldest month of the year. And here I am in shorts and a shirt and sweating. So it's uh, it has been windy as it could be. My little tent, I'm, I'm actually worried about it making it to the end now. I've had to, had to do a bunch of stuff to try and keep the wind from tearing it up. But, you know, we're uh, gonna just hang on as long as we can. And maybe, you know, at some point I might have to get a shed out here, which is what I intend to do to store the boat anyway. So it's a good angle showing the mixing of that compound. It works pretty good now. And uh, going on to the transom here, you know, this is probably the area that those notches um, are ha have the highest deal. But you know, uh, if it if it makes it a little more fragile or whatever, you know, this area here, you know, the back of the boat shouldn't should should be the one that gets beat up the least. I hope none of it gets beat up. But you know, I was really happy with the way this stuff goes on and and that transition from that center motor well, like right there where I'm working. By, by once again learning as I go here to, to put some some putty in that you know right there as I'm trying to produce that and make that flat and bridge that gap and then I come back and you know as I as I start I'm putting quite a lot of pressure downward pressure on that that uh, blade as I'm pulling it and then I straighten it up and really you know kind of skim the you know because that's how I control the the how much putty I'm leaving on the surface and then in the end like right now I'm more or less just trying to smooth it out as best I can. So when I come back and sand, it's uh, I got a pretty good place to start. You know, I'm working on that corner, and I'm really worried about that those these transom corners, much like I am the chine corners. And I work on this one closest here to us. You know, you don't get a really good look at it later, but I work on it quite a bit. But so you can kind of see at the top up there, you know, on that that hull I just pulled that putty on. Like you, you, you can, there are parts where you can still see through it. So it's, you know, it is still very, very thin. Even though it may look like it's 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 thick, it may be a total, like right now, it may be an eighth of an inch thick. If it's an eighth, eighth of an inch thick at the thickest place, and I'm gonna sand some of that back. So uh, hopefully all that makes more sense and uh, it plays out, and you know. Um, Maybe you know. Once again, I'm a. This is the first boat I've ever built. I'm. I, I'm a DIY guy. Uh, I've never done this, so you know, it, it it it's wasteful thinking for me to go back and say, well, I should have done this and I should have done that, and you know, and and if I if you would have done this, you wouldn't be doing well. But I'm I'm at the point where I I can only go forward. I can't go back and change the glass, the wood, the fiber. You know, the way I did it. And, like I said, I, I had peel ply right there, and I fully intended to use it. I just didn't get a chance. So we're going to keep moving it forward. That's all I know to do, and I'm happy with the direction it's going. Um, I don't think anybody can be uh, can be critical of, of the direction it's going because from this point, it is really moving, and it's looking nice, and I think I'm going to be very happy with the path from here forward to, to get it to paint. I think I've joked about it a couple of times, 
you know, like I have jokes or wishful thinking, like I really thought that I was going to get out there, you know, a couple times before and be able to just get more done, you know, to uh, and, and dedicated to having it, to putting in the time to get it, to get like all the bottom puttied. I mean, this is, I, I wanted to have that done three days ago or three you know, um, the last time that I worked on it, I was thinking I'd get both of the, you know, the whole bottom and both the sides done. Um, but, you know, it's just, it, it, it's a lot of work. It's very fulfilling. And it's, you know, I think at the pace I'm working, like right now, as we look at it, you know, I'm probably going twice as fast as I was when I started that other side over there, when I had that camouflage shirt on. It just, it, you know, you kind of get used to the process. You get used to how to move the material around and how to pull it. And, and you know, like I keep saying, you know, what does what does done look like? Uh, and, and knowing, okay, yeah, this is good enough. I, you know, I've got it where it needs to be, and that's good enough. And, and we're going to come back and sand it. But, you know, I think I've said this a couple times. Once I get it all puttied up here, um, I'm going to come back and I'm going to longboard it all again. And, and then hopefully at that point after that I'm gonna put a guide coat on sand that back and you know let me see my low spots and whatnot pull putty in the low spots you know resand that and then I think I'm gonna be going to high build primer uh, before too long so you can see here in this angle um, as I'm as I'm working on that chine you know I, I don't I don't have enough putty um, at this point to uh, to probably do this whole bottom so but I, but I do want to get this chine done so that that when when I come back and sand I can sand on this side here and kind of work on that chine and that way if I, if I have to come back and do some more touch-ups to it I'll be one step farther ahead and I'm just trying to you know I'm also as I pull a little bit of putty right here on the end my, my putties um, it's it's very warm uh, on this day uh, so I think the putty's starting to kind of set up on me. So you see me, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna really start trying to hurry up. And you know, one of the worst things for me is the anxiety of once you mix this stuff together, you know, the clock's ticking and you got to be moving. And so I've tried to spread it out as thin as I could, you know, where so that it maybe slows it down or whatnot. But you know, I, so far I really like this stuff. It, it plays very nice. Um, with, with moving around it doesn't sag it doesn't drip it doesn't uh, you know it kind of holds together but it's fluid enough that you can really kind of move it and place it and, and it's uh it all works out pretty good and i think you can see in some of these angles where that chine's you know kind of curving down through there I'm, i mean i'm really proud of it uh, i wish i could show how much time i've just sat back and looked at it but it's kind of what we get done this path uh, we're going to be uh you know, keep pushing forward. Next thing you see is probably uh, less lay and fairing compound and more sanding. And hopefully we're going to be out of the sanding phase before too long because I've just about had my fill of it. Look at the curve of that bow right there. Look how nice that looks.